A very good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Luis, uh, CEO and founder of FOMOPAY. Uh, before I start the sharing, let me do a, a quick intro about who we are and what we do so that uh, you can have a brief idea. So I graduated from NTU, uh, School of Triple E, uh, in 2015. So Prof Er was my uh, professor back then. And it's my honor to have this continuous engagement with the school. Actually, I started my journey in my year four in Triple E. Actually, it's still the Triple E garage, right? That's where we started our uh, formal pay. Uh, it's our eighth year journey, and we are celebrating our company's eighth year anniversary this month. So, uh, which is, uh, if we look back, uh, it's a long journey, uh, but everything we started from Triple E and start from NTU. Um, uh, just now, as Prof has mentioned, so uh, we get quite uh, a different kind of uh, award by uh, you know working on this uh, uh, digital payment, digital banking, and blockchain uh, industry. Uh, and so I just don't need to repeat here. Mm. This is myself. And then when it comes to formal pay, uh, I'm uh, I'm not sure how many of you. Uh, might hear before. This is just a sneak view uh, about some of the numbers we do. Uh, one, we are fully licensed uh, in Singapore. We got four licenses under the Monetary Authority of Singapore. And also the highlight is we received the first digital payment token license, AKA crypto license uh, in Singapore history. Uh, we were granted this license on the 1st September, 2021. We have been running for eight years uh, as a financial institution. Uh, uh, we got uh, more than uh, 1,000 plus media uh, uh, reports, uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, media features uh, all over the world uh, by uh, working on all the different kinds of uh, fintech and digital payment uh, uh, industry leading solutions. Right now we have over 5,000 plus institutions and corporates who are using our uh, digital payment on a daily basis. Uh, if you go to airport, entire airport is using us. Uh, then if you go to like RWS, Marina Bay Sands, uh, even you buy, uh, if you go to Gongcha or even Old Changi, right? So from the big merchant to the small merchant, you're able to see our payment solutions uh, at the cashier counter to facilitate your daily cashless payments. And uh, our processing volume is what more than 1.5 billion uh, uh, in the past few months. Um, so that's just give you a, a overall view about the volume and the transaction numbers we are processing. And uh, yes, this was the first crypto license uh, we were granted uh, uh, back in uh, 1st September 2021, uh, which is also the reason uh, I'm yeah here to share about our thoughts and our journey about the crypto as payment and. Uh, with the fundamental technology based on the blockchain uh, technology, distributed ledger technology. Okay, so for FOM ourselves, we aim to build the Asia's first licensed payment ecosystem with interoperability between the fiat currency and the digital currency. The fiat currency means SGD, USD, you know, the, uh, the, the, the real money we have been uh, dealing with in the past years and the digital currencies uh, refers to the cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDC, USDT, and also the stable coins, right? Like USDC, USDT, and also the different central banks are also doing experiments on their uh, central banks' uh, digital currencies. So those are the, I mean, all included under the digital currency definition. So for us, so we, our mission is to provide one-stop digital payment solution for the institutions and corporates. Uh, wherever you want to accept the fiat payment, you want to accept the crypto payment, then uh, everything is possible. Okay, so I just want to have a quick, you know, uh, uh, I mean, read the uh, walkthrough about uh, why we start to do this. Uh, what's the problem statement we aim to solve uh, when we first start the, uh, the, the company back in 2015 uh, upon graduation from NTU. So in Southeast Asia, uh, I mean, there are uh, 10 ASEAN countries, right? Except Singapore, most are developing countries. And there are over 70% population in this region. They are underbanked 
they don't have credit card and they are not eligible for that back in 2015. All right, most of the people, they are still mainly using the cash. Even in Singapore, over 60% of transactions back in 2015 are still cash uh, transactions, right? If you go to the hawker centers, if you go to, you know, uh, the wet market, everybody is using the cash. And that's a problem that the government and, and the, the, the industry would like to solve by rolling out the new generation of the uh, digital payment. Okay, you can see before 2015, it was all card payment, right? Visa, MasterCard. I mean, our Singapore is a net, right? It's uh, this kind of card scheme, which has been dominating the entire, you know, the cashless payment in the past many, many years. However, from 2015, which in our industry, the digital payment industry, we consider 2015 as the beginning of the mobile payment or the, the first year of mobile payment. Why? Because the e-wallets like WeChat Alipay from China start to go international. They start to expand outside China back in 2015. In the Western world, the uh, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Android Pay was introduced to the market. Right? People start to use their mobile phone for the payment instead of card for payment. And later in 2018, right, in Singapore, there are Grab Pay, there are Shopee Pay, more of this kind of e-wallet coming into the market. You can see in this uh, region, there are 1.5 billion credit card issue, but there are 6, 3.6 billion smartphone, right, mobile device. So in terms of scale, it's different. And mobile payments is built uh, on top of the smart. Uh, uh, smartphone, this kind of mobile device. So you can see there are more and more new digital payments coming out since 2015. But there's a problem for the merchant if you run an f &B, if you run a retail, right? You are so confused with so many new mobile payments that you don't have time to connect one by one and you don't want to put different terminals on your cashier counter just for accepting you know, different e-wallet or different digital payments. That's why you can see when we list down all the different mobile payments in our real life, you can see on the left side, the card payment, then the telecoms, telecoms who are rolling out the, 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 the carrier billing, rolling out the e-wallets like Central Dash. Then there are big tech company like Faith Pay, right? Grab, they are not banks, but they're also developing the wallet, right? They're also getting popular. And then the banks, they also roll their wallet, right? The, the let's say the DPS, they are not only having the DBS iBank app, they also have PayLa, OCBC have PayAnyone, UOB has Mighty, in addition to the bank apps they have. So you can see if you are a merchant, you are so confused with you know, so many new digital payments. So that's why they will come to uh, payment gateway solution provider, which is FOMO. So merchant come to us, they're able to connect to all the different new digital payments at one stop, right? Regardless if credit card, regardless if mobile payments, e-wallets, regardless if bank transfer, regardless if the, uh, the, the buy now, pay later, right? So they just need to connect to FOMO. They're able to connect to all the new digital payments at one go. So that's how we started back in 2015 when all these new digital payments came into the market. So this was a picture taken back in 2016 around there. Yeah. You could probably, yeah. Uh, I mean, you cannot see this anymore, right? Because uh, the latest solution has solved this. But back then, you can see this is just a chicken rice shop, but they are accepting so many different payments and each one of the payment are independent, right? So you have to paste different kind of QR stickers on your cashier counter. And your client need to find the different QR in order to make the payment. It's messy. And there's no space for the retail or f &B to place so many different kinds of QR or terminal, right? That's why Singapore government start to, uh, I mean, took the initiative to become the first in the world to introduce the national QR standard, which is called the SGQR back in 2018. They want to make a regulation and you, unify the QR standard. So everybody share the same QR technology standard. So WeChat can recognize the, 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 the SGQR, GrabPay can recognize the same SGQR. So that's what the, 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 the central banks did back in 2018. So FOMO was one of the only 
uh, fintech companies sitting there together with CBS, OCBC, UOB, Visa, Mastercard, and uh, Union Pay to draft and develop this national QR standard, which is based on uh, certain blockchain and also related technologies with this SGQR, right? Which is this one you can see here. And it becomes very common in the market. You can find this almost every poker center, right? Compared to the previous picture you see with multiple stickers, all this as a shop front. Now with the government coming in, introducing the common QR standard, which AKA SGQR, right? All the wallet here, you can see, are able to share and recognize the same QR. And you, as a merchant, you just need to have this one QR code putting at the shop front and all your consumers, uh, whatever e-wallets they use, whatever mobile payments they use, they're able to scan the same QR and make the payments. So that is a big progress that makes Singapore and helps Singapore to move toward the cashier society. And you will be surprisingly to know that, you know, after the, I mean, because of the COVID, this kind of adoption has been accelerated, right? A lot of the FMB or hawkers, they used to be very comfortable with the cash only. And now because of hygiene issues, because of the COVID requirement, right? Um, safety distance, uh, safe distance, um, this kind of measurement, they start to use the cash payment more. So you don't need to carry the cash. You just need to take out your phone, you scan and pay. Then the merchant will be receiving the money. So that's how it works. And I hope you can have a better understanding how the technology could bring the mobile payment and more cashless and convenient to our real life, uh, which become the new norm right now. But if you look at the picture, right, just three or four years ago, uh, compared to now, it's a big radical change already. But, okay. The digital payment never stopped. This industry has been fast growing and every day is changing. And starting from 2021, the new demand and hot trends start to come into this industry, which is cryptocurrency, right? Uh, let's take, but before we zoom into the cryptocurrency, uh, I just want to have a quick uh, sharing about the web one, two, three, uh, which is a fundamental the in, uh, uh, concept for you to understand before we you know, dive into the cryptocurrency concept so that you can have a better understanding why we are seeing the fast growing demand for the crypto or digital asset. I believe all, uh, uh, most of you are from you know, engineering background, um, especially triple E, right? Um, that's uh, why we have this nice sharing. But in the past years, we, in the past, I would say, uh, uh, 30 years, we have gone through a rapid evolution from web one uh, in 1990s. And now we are moving fast into the web three. But what is the difference? What's the definition of the web one to three, right? Uh, you need to understand this before you can better understand the cryptocurrency and the, why it's important. The web one, right, is back in 1990s, uh, whereby it's like Yahoo, Right, this kind of website or even Swiss Times, uh, it's a read only. So the content creator hosts the information and content onto their networks. You will use the browser and most of the time desktop or laptop to browse and to view the message, right? It's a one-way communication. You will have your username and password in order to log in, right? So that is considered web one. Why? Because you can only read. That's the only action you as an individual uh, or, 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 or as a customer can do. Then when the smartphone, like the iPhone was introduced in 2008, right? So the mobile internet came into the real life and it started to grow a new, uh, different kind of uh, internet economy, which is considered as Web2. So what's the difference between Web 2 and Web 1? It's because in the Web 2, it starts to grow the platform players like Facebook, Instagram, right? And also the TikTok, uh, this kind of platform. The difference between the Web 1 and Web 2 is as an individual customer, you are not only able to consume the con content, which is read, 
you're also able to write the content or generate the content, which is like you post your videos, your pictures, your uh, some tags on your social media or TikTok, right? This is a web too. So from the data perspective, you're both reading and writing input and output the data onto the platform, okay? Onto this data network. And the account, I mean, you start to use a, a account. You start to use account to log in, right? Uh, instead of using your username and password every time you have to key in, right? That's why you will have one login by Facebook, by Instagram, or one login by WeChat, right? In the ecosystem. However, you don't own the data for the web too, okay? If you, you, you saw there are lots of, uh, you know, controversial cases that, you know, the picture and the video you post on Facebook doesn't belong to you, right? You have no rights uh, on that at all. And the, the platform uh, will use the algorithm, right? To do the matching by monetizing your data so that they are able to make profit from let's say the advertisement from the seo uh from uh you know all this kind of different way uh, to monetize your data so that they are extremely profitable that's how the platform players like uh you know uh, facebook uh, they rapidly grow but when people especially the young generation start to generate more and more data they are living they are born in the digital area so there's so much content was uploaded and contributed to the platform. Then people start to think, why am I as a content generator not get any benefit or uh, returns from the time and resource and the content that I contribute to the uh, platform, right? Uh, I'm, not I'm not satisfied with what, you know, the YouTubers, I mean, YouTube return for the YouTubers, right? For some of the advertisement returns. I'm the one who generates the content. I would like to be fully incentivized and further, you know, uh, grow my, 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 my uh, protect my interest. That's why more and more people start to complain about this, about the ownership and the rights of the data. So that's the reason uh, when blockchain technology was really getting materialized and then it become the fundamental technology to enable and empower the Web3, which is rapidly growing as a new economy with a totally different business model compared to Web 1 and Web 2. In the Web 3 world, you as a user, not only read other people's data or content, you are not only generating and contributing your data and content, actually you also own the data you generate and uh, contribute. So that's a fundamental difference I understand. I want every one of you to keep in mind as a takeaway for today. And because you own these digital assets, which you contribute onto this asset network built on top of the uh, DLT, the distributed ledger networks. So uh, you will be able to get reward if other people consume your, 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 your data, if other people spend attention and time uh, on your, or let's say pages, your Facebook post, right? So that's what now a lot of Web3, FinTech companies, uh, new startups are working on, right? I mean. Uh, uh, L0, -O, L -O, L1, L2, different layers. But the fundamental concept here is because now the ownership of the, the content goes back to the user itself uh, compared to Web2, it belongs to the platform. So the cryptocurrencies and the, the, the digital asset is the so-called uh, media exchange on this blockchain network that how you are able to get reward, right? You are not getting reward uh, by the bank transfer that, you know, someone who are paid to your bank account. No, you will get rewarded from these tokens that build on top of this network as your return for, you know, uh, uh, for contributing your content and your, 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 your assets. Because of this, uh, you know, Web3, uh, you know, growth and came into the market. So the cryptocurrency payment is also uh, quickly rolling out worldwide. You can see the stats, statistic here, right? Um, the Asia wide, there are over 160 million uh, people who own the cryptocurrencies and North America, there are 28 million. Uh, Europe, there are 38 million. Uh, almost 80% are male compared to 20% female. And most of them, more than half, are aged below 34 years old. Uh, 
uh, more than 80% are university educated, right? Like all of you here. Uh, and also uh, one third of them has an annual income over 100,000 US dollars. These are the characteristics of the early adopters of this crypto as payment. And the volume continue to grow. It's over 1 billion in the first half of the, uh, 2021. And then this number continue to grow according to our uh, uh, daily uh, observations. But if we zoom into Singapore context, right? According to the latest statistics, there are close to 20% of populations in Singapore who own the digital asset, which means uh, not including both uh, cryptocurrencies and NFT, et cetera. And out of this 20%, 55.6% age between 18 years old to 34 years old, right? The one of our client is Conhaco, right? Probably you heard about that. That's a crypto exchange whereby you are able to, right, uh, uh, to, 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 uh, to, to trade uh, in the crypto uh, currencies that they are licensed. Uh, they are our client as well. And 37% is 35 years old to 54 years old. And only 7.4% is more than 55 years old, right? Uh, you will be surprised, but one, out of five people in Singapore already own the cryptocurrency and the number continues to grow. And that's the, 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 the trend we are seeing. So, and the, the digital asset world, right? Uh, rich to three, three trillion dollar market uh, back in 2021 during the peak time. But recently because of market crash, the, the, the entire market uh, cap it has dropped. Now it's only around one trillion plus worldwide in terms of cryptocurrency. But it's undoubted for that, you know, the cryptocurrency are not, you know, are, are not going to disappear, right? Uh, because it's up and down, it proves that it will continue to exist over there. So it just become a question for everyone here, everyone of us to think about how we want to embrace this new change of both the, you know, the technology, uh, uh, fundamental technology and also this new uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, right now, FOMO ourselves, we are supporting the four currencies as payment solutions, uh, which I'm going to demonstrate later uh, by end of this session. Uh, we are supporting Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDC, and USDT. Uh, you know, these are the demand from the market because the merchant, as we shared previously, right? They were accepting the credit card, the e-wallet from us before, and now they come to us. They say, hey, we got clients, right? Not only in Singapore, but some foreigners who come here, they say, hey, I want to use cryptocurrency to, to, to make payment and, and to do the transaction. Then this uh, is on blockchain technologies. And that's why we start to add in crypto payment in addition to the existing payment solutions we give and uh, to give to the merchant and it's getting more and more popular. Let's take a look at some examples in Singapore who are accepting crypto payment. Uh, one is a SGX listed company called the Eurospot, right? They are the Lamborghini dealers uh, in Singapore. So and also listed on uh, SGX. So they are the first list, public listed company in Singapore who accept the crypto as payment to enable their customer to buy from uh, uh, from them. Uh, another one is the watch dealer, right? Two tone vintage is uh, is located in the Scott Square. They are also accepting this. And there are many newspaper uh, articles talking about, you know, uh, local merchants in Singapore start to accept the crypto as payment, uh, especially right now. Uh, Singapore is building itself as a global responsible and, uh, you know, uh, and uh, compliant digital asset hubs which attract a lot of talent in the Web3 economy coming into Singapore. So they are here, they have cryptocurrencies, so they want to use this one to pay, uh, but definitely they need to follow the compliant uh, rules in order to make the payment. And if we zoom out, right? If you look at the world context, there are over 18,000 business worldwide who start to accept cryptocurrency as payment. Most of them, they are in US and some of them in Europe. You can see that, you know, uh, Tesla, uh, BMW, they are accepting this, they are the car, right? And then from the consumer uh, products like Amazon, US, Shopify, uh, Booking.com, Expedia, they start to accept crypto as payment. 
because compared to the traditional conventional payment, it's cheaper and more safe because there's no chargeback. And a lot of gaming platforms are also accept the crypto payment. If you know about the OpenSea, which is the largest NFT platform, they are only accepting the crypto payment as well, right? So these are some of the examples. But we believe this number of 18,000 worldwide are continue to grow, right? Mm -hmm. Because when the new generation, they are born with a digital area, they, are, they grow up with the digital payment, right? They will use more of this kind of crypto currencies. So the next question is, you are going to think about how, I mean, it's the early stage, right? Still at the very early stage. So how you can explore the opportunity in this area, because you can see this is a trend coming and how you are able to react uh, properly, right? To, 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 to come up with better solutions to accommodate the needs and the, uh, to solve the pain points. All right, uh, a quick summary about the, the crypto market, uh, crypto payments, which is the main topic today, right? And before I start to do the dem uh, demonstration to give you a real uh, feeling. So the crypto payment is real-time payment, 724, right? And uh, right now there are four cryptocurrencies. Uh, we get a, a rollout uh, for the merchant uh, because it's on blockchain, right? Uh, there's no chargeback. Chargeback means uh, if you use credit card to make a payment at a restaurant, but then next day you call your bank, you say, oh, it's not me who make that payment. There is a chance for the uh, bank to get, take back the money from the merchant and then the merchant will get a loss, right? This is considered a chargeback. But on the blockchain, because everything is recorded transparently, right? And you are not able to reverse, uh, do the reverse change. So you cannot deny that it is the sender which initiates this transfer to the node and block uh, owned by the recipient. So there won't be chargeback and there won't be dispute. And the lock exchange rate, even though the cryptocurrency, the price continue to, to change every second, but there's way to lock the exchange rate uh, with the market leading solution. And for the merchant itself, the, they don't need to worry about the, 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 the FX uh, exposure and the fluctuation because that will be locked for them, so they are protected. Uh, all right. Uh, I think those are the benefits of, uh, I mean, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the perks, right, which attracts uh, the market attention, why more and more business and, uh, and retail start to accept the crypto as payment. Uh, and also is uh, because of the DLT technology to enable the, the, the entire infrastructure, totally different from the centralized system that you know the credit card and e-wallets was working on. That's why it gives uh, alternative opportunities for the new companies, uh, the new uh, solutions to be widely adopted in this market. Yeah, so without further ado, uh, I mean, after you have heard about all this, so next I'm going to do a real demo, right? For you to, well, I mean, some of you probably saw this before, but many of you, maybe this is the first time for you to take a look how you are able to use cryptocurrency to make a payment. So that, you know, when you see this in the near future, when you purchase from the e-commerce website, when you are buying something online, offline, you won't be surprised. You will remember that you already saw this uh, uh, from the Triple E Alumni series. And after the demo, I will be opening the, the floor and feel free to ask if any questions. All right, so can you see my screen? Cannot, right? That is a website. Okay. Let me share another screen here. Okay. All right, all right. So we come to this screen. Uh, this is a uh, e invoice online. You can imagine this is a checkout page uh, when you shop online, right? So let's say you are buying a car <laughs> from this online marketplace, all right? This is uh, at the merchant website, okay? Uh, here is just to give you an idea what items you buy. Let's say the customer is called a Dashing, 
and then he bought a car uh, at, for example, one hundred fifty thousand dollar, uh, cent dollars. And now you need to check out, right? Just like how you do um, uh, on the e-commerce site. You click, then you will jump to the crypto payment page. All right, you can take a look here. Uh, for example, if you want to use BTC to make a payment. All right, so it either generates a QR code, which includes the crypto address assigned to the merchant, uh, or you are able to copy the crypto address that belongs to the merchant. You, this is the address, right? Uh, which belongs to this uh, Lamborghini merchant. And this is the amount of the BTC you need to transfer to him, right? You can see there will be real time spot rate uh, between the BTC and SGD here, right? So one BTC right now, let's say, uh, is this amount of SGD. So this total price amount divide this one, you'll give you this number of BTC, right? So that's how it works. If you've got the, 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 the the, the, the regulated the crypto e-wallet, right? You open your coin, hard or whatever. You can scan or copy this address. You transfer this amount of uh, BTC to this address. Then this transaction will be completed. You can also take a look at the ETH, right? And if you want to use Ethereum to pay, same, this is the address and this is the amount. This is the real-time FX code for this transaction. So for the consumers, you will know upfront, right? What is the FX, the real time quote uh, before you, you complete this transaction, right? And also the merchant, they will receive $150,000. They don't really get this Ethereum. So they don't need to be worried about the, the cryptocurrency, the fluctuations. And you can see there's a USDC, USDT, which are stable coins concept. Uh, then you might be, uh, you might want to ask what's the difference between TRC20 and ERC20, right? ERC20 is uh, Ethereum uh, protocol and the TRC20 is a Tron protocol, right? Uh, even though it's all USDT or USDC, but it's built on different kind of chain, uh, which give you the different kind of results. So now there are many, many blockchain, right? Uh, uh, layer one of this, but uh, the currencies, the tokens is built on top of different chains. If you are keen to know more, we can uh, talk this separately. So you can see it has USDT on ERC. Um, this will be the address and this will be amount, right? If you the stable coins USDT is almost one to one to USD, right? You can see that one USDT is 1.3813 SGD. And if you compare it to USD to SGD, it's almost the same. So that's a convenience. But if you've got your crypto, you know, regulated crypto uh, account, then you are able to make payment for this transaction, right? You just need to transfer this amount to the merchant, right? And then USDC as well. So hope this give you a high level understanding, right? About the crypto payment. It's on chain, this will be the receiving node and you will use your own node, you use your private key to authorize this transaction and transfer this amount of tokens to this address, which belongs to the merchant or which was assigned to the merchant. So the transaction will be completed, right? Once the transaction is complete, it will jump back to the you know, successful page. Similar, similar checkout process, just like your credit card or e-wallet. But this is based on the you know, DLT, the blockchain technology. And the cost of clearing, the speed of clearing is much faster. So that's why it's growing and uh, 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 getting more and more popular in the market, right? And you probably will see this more and more, uh, okay? In a lot of e-commerce uh, soon. Uh, yeah, so you will uh, not be surprised and you will probably see this the first time from the Triple E alumni series sessions. So that is the main purpose for the uh, school and for the prof uh, to invite us back to, to, to share, you know, the market leading, the, the new solutions, uh, which is going to, uh, you know, uh, be different from the traditional way of payment. All right, so uh, those will be most likely my sharing today. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Prof Er and 
maybe uh, uh, welcome for, I mean, feel free to ask any questions. Mm -hmm.